it was fun the first five years. Oh, that's quite long, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I really find it fun. Um, but right now I'm facing quite a burnout. Yep. Between juggling my climbing performance and um, yeah, work love performance. For the sport? Uh, yeah, love for the sport. Yeah. I think I think the climbing scene has grown so much, right? Like, for example, like for yourself, like you shared that you took two years in open to get one year from novice to inter, one year from inter to open, two years from open to open finals. For myself, it's kind of like a similar thing. But now, but now, <laughs> yeah, so, but now, so like, it's previously, I said like, it has grown so much over the 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel like it, there should be like a different category for like a split category among the category, you know, like, yep. like the novice, I think, I really think that there should be a new novice category. In between novice and inter? Yes. The yeah. novice can be kept as like real noob, novice. Noob novice, inter, yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Which I feel that could grow the competition scene even more. Mm. That make newer climbers more willing to compete. Yeah, more, feel, it's more encouraging, like, right? Yeah. I feel that if this trend were to continue, there wouldn't be as much growth over the years mm. because it would be just too difficult to even be in the novice finals. Yeah, that's not like to mention only, the higher finals, right? Yeah, like there's only like eight spots. Yeah. And then the eight spots, the eight finalists will finally move to Inter. Inter. But how long, how long can this eight filter the 300 Exactly. Other people, you know. When there are so many people coming to the yeah, spot and at then, one time, and then right? the new people keep on coming into the spot. Yep. Yeah. So there should be a new category, la. How about in in between inter and open? Like, what are your thoughts about that? Or like, you like, do you feel like the like the inter people who promoted should just be left to die in open if they deserve <laughs> to be there? <laughs> I mean, they uh, don't, don't don't deserve to compete. I mean, yeah. There, there's a lot of. Okay, to be honest, I think during my time from Inter to from winning Inter to Open Finals, I think it wasn't much of a big gap. Mm. It's, it's, it's like realistic, la, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of realistic. Like you can kind of get yourself there within one or two years if yep. you really put your mind to it. Yep. But <laughs> as of now, I think if I were to put uh, myself into their shoes yep. if I have won Inter um, it's a long and then put the again. same amount of effort <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will probably take like 5-10 years to finally get into Open Finals yeah 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 like unless suddenly the top half of the Open man dies or something yeah, like that yeah like they retire from competition scene can you imagine what a prodigy that would be if he managed to do like a 1 year 1 year 2 year kind of thing it's just like that would be insane eh that that actually in today's concept was, would be insane. Eh? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um which I think it there would never be this kind of people anymore. Then doesn't that spark the question, how come Japan can have all these new like youth athletes that almost they can be an argument made that they dominate the open scene? Hmm. It's quite crazy, right? Do you think they ever like pass this stage where the dominant people are just on top and then they are just there forever, that kind of thing? I think the dominant people in like let's say the Japan stage, I think they they are just forever there, you know, like before Narasaki it was um Kokoro. Like, yeah, Kokoro and Rei Sugimoto. Rei and Sukuru. Sukuru, yeah. And they are always there for years, many, many years yeah. until the new ones. It's only up. recently, right, that all the youth, like, you never see their name, like, like, 
suddenly they just like wow 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 and then it's like they start taking podium finishes in like BJC in like their internal competitions it's quite crazy eh? uh, considering the caliber of which the com- like the competitors they're competing mm-hmm. against right these competitors crush the world you know and then these uh, youth athletes they just come and take their spot and at times make it look pretty easy <laughs> I must say I think it then just the climbing culture or not really climbing culture or maybe it's just the culture in Japan where they really take pride in what they are doing and if everyone takes pride in whatever they are doing right like as a as a community as a herd you you improve so much faster yep together and that's why it, it just explodes huh? and and secrets are shared are being shared within themselves and that's that's just how it is huh? It's like they have matured so much as a community, right? Mm-hmm. To the point that really is anyone's game. Yeah, so like... Do you see Singapore? Like they, maybe they that? have like like a hundred mentors around around mm. in Japan versus maybe like us yeah. in Singapore. Maybe there's like 10, mm. for example, and then we spread to another 10 each. Mm. And, and I guess slowly, hopefully we will catch up to them. But that's not like years. Yeah, that it will take years. Yeah, so it I guess it's on us to impart the knowledge. Definitely. To the younger ones. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. To to kinda like give them the shortcut to success, you know. Yeah. From our trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they can do the same for the next. Yeah. Okay. But on that right, I feel uh-huh. Okay. Previously, we don't really have, like, this coaching industry, right? Yeah. I think the coaching industry kind of only works, um, or only started in the past five, six years. Yep. Right, so, would you giving tips to random people um, devalue your coaching? Uh, yeah, I've thought about it before. But at the same time, then they can be, or like on the other hand, it's like, there's an argument of kindness, or right? Like altruism. You know? Like, there's no real reason for you to withhold any information other than money. Mm. But there's also no real reason for you to give the information. Give the information, right? Like, in, like, like to me, if I'm getting paid, right? You're paying for my undivided attention. You're not paying me for the information. For, like, you're not paying me only for the information that I can give you. Because I will give them to you whether you're paying me or not. Just that I'm not having my eyes on you the entire two hours. So in a sense that you're, you're, you are getting a lot lesser, right? If you're not paying for it. And then that's just how I choose to see. And I like, like to me, it's like a good balance. Or, yeah, because if you're not paying me, I can choose not to care about you, right? mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think that's worth paying f- to have your eyes <laughs> look at you for two hours. I think it's it's worth paying for lah. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next topic. So like we all know that like you're a full time setter as well as uh coach for most well known for NUS lah, right? Mm-hmm. How has it been? Uh earning a living off your passion and what are some of the struggles that come along with it? Can be anything, can be inspiration, can be lack of money, can be, yeah, like anything. Mm. I mean, I was obsessed with climbing, right? So naturally, it it makes sense to work in the climbing industry and Mm. And how I started was being a root setter. So Ben Bento was the one that put me in yep. into this climbing industry as a root setter. So he was um the one guiding me on how to set problems, uh, uh, how to use impact driver and stuff like that. Mm. Um and through the uh forerunning process and stuff like that. What's next? What's after that? 
then uh, oh, what uh, like what are some of the struggles that surfaced right. as you mix both? Yeah, so as I mix both, like your passion, passion, and your job, obviously, and my job. Yep. I kind of get burned out a lot along the way. Like it makes me wanna um, quit climbing altogether. But. After taking like <laughs> a short one or two days break, I realized that I come back anyway mm. because um, that's what I really love. Uh. Yeah. But it, I still do have the struggle of coming into the gym, especially now when I'm older, coming into the gym, doing my job um, as a root setter. Yep. But it's not actually improving my skills as a climber. Mm. Because it's not training, exactly climbing. training. Yep. It's not exactly putting my conscious effort into play. Yep. Um, it's more about forerunning the problem itself, whether the move works for that grade or not. Yep. Yeah. So it's not a focused climbing session. Yep. And and with that very physical job. Um, as I get older, I get more, I get tired, like easily. Um, it's it's tough keeping up. Um, climbing training. Yep. And and the job itself, mm. because, I mean, I have to set like what, up to yellow, um, blue, at border wall stuff like that, which, is kind of like my limit right now like blues i haven't really been finishing them like linking them from the start yeah linking them from the start from last year i haven't finished a single blue yet but that's not your job right? your job is to make sure it works yeah so my job was to make it work but as a climber i'm struggling to actually find the time and energy to like come to a, the gym on a separate day to my workplace to finish the the work that I put up, mm. and like, why do I need to do it? You know, because I've already done some of the moves yeah. during um, during work. Yep. Yeah. So it kind of takes away the fun for me right now. Mm. Um, it was fun the first five years. Oh, wow, that's quite long, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I really find it. Um, but right now I'm facing quite a burnout yep. between juggling my climbing performance and um, your work love performance. For the sport? Uh, yeah, love for the sport. Yeah, because like your, it's quite conflicting. Like these two conflicting ideas of training and putting up things basically as a service to other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. I yeah, I I can understand what you mean when like especially when you said that it doesn't make quite make sense for you to like go back to the gym and do the rules that you put up because you already kind of know that you can do this and this and this. And uh I mean like we are all humans and we all like uh like we like we all get bored. So it's quite it's quite a dread to like go back to your workplace again just to train things like that. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just want to get away and do something else, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but I guess providing that service of setting or coaching fulfills you in another way, in like sharing the love of the sport. Uh, even if it may be at the expense of yourself, but I guess it's for the greater good. More people are loving the sport as your as your passion for the sport slowly depletes but it always comes in phases so like yeah lor like I just feel like it's a different kind of fulfillment it's just maybe sometimes it just doesn't feel right for you mm-hmm. at this point of time lah right yeah I guess I mean what kept me going over the years as a root setter was um, is because that when I observe climbers 
I'm trying my problems. It's like from the moment where they couldn't even do the moves, mm. and then they finally like get it and understand the move, and then finally finishing the problem, and then it puts a smile to their face. It also yep. puts a smile to my face as well. Mm. And like seeing how hard they try or like flailing on the wall, it's kind of like it's the fight that we were talking about just now, yeah, right? It, it, you know, when when it gets so ridiculous of how hard they fight, it, <laughs> it becomes quite funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. but it's 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 funny not in a bad way. Like we are laughing at them. Kind it's of, like we're happy for them, right? We are we are hap- so happy for them that yeah. kind of. Funny yeah, if yeah, you get yeah, yeah. What we mean, cause we know exactly what it feels like to be in their position, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like that's where the, like the real joy of climbing is. Yeah, like so fighting, you know. Yeah, that's for like my root setting, uh, Like what keeps me going. But the then job. again, it's very different. It's very different concepts from yourself, mm-hmm. from you yourself enjoying climbing as a sport. Yes. Yeah, it's a it's quite struggle, like, I can imagine, and I don't know how how sus- how sustainable it is. For you and I don't know how long like do you see yourself doing it for years to come or um I guess for some people in in the root setting community they are kind of um happy with where they are. Yep. Um in terms of their own climbing performance, they are ready to let go of improving. Yep. And they are just maintaining for, status quo. Yeah. For the sake of either the job or their own happiness as a climber. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so... But for you? Are you are you ready to settle? I... Personally, I'm not ready to settle in terms of climbing performance. Um, at the core of it, you're still a... Yeah, at the core of it, I, I still want to... Try climb, hard dog, right? I still want to <laughs> try really, really hard. Yep. I still have goals. Um, not really s- so much as a comparator, but I have goals outdoors. Mm. Um, I still want to finish my first 9A. It still revolves on performance, huh? Yeah. And I still do think that it's possible. As my previous trip, I tried some 8 Cs and it's within my limits. Mm. We, um, this lay park limits, huh? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if I could work out all the moves within, within a day, mm. and I just need time to to link it, which as Singaporeans, I don't think we have the luxury of time outdoors. Yep. We are only given that much leave and opportunity to head outdoors. Mm. Um, I feel that given the time and opportunity, um, I could finish Nine that A. 9A. Yeah. Nice. <laughs>